So, uh, why quantization is important? Because it will give you much better performance um, with just a little of accuracy um, drop. So, I will cover all these topics today and I will show you uh, how it runs on my computer and how fast it is. So, but let's start. I am Asian, I am part of a team of evangelists at Intel and uh, our role is to talk about Intel AI products, especially uh, OpenVINO. I will let you know about OpenVINO a little bit later, uh, but not, only, not, not, on, not all people know that Intel has um, products for OpenVINO, for, for AI and deep learning. So that's why uh, we are here. Um, we cover, of course, different regions. My region is Europe, Europe. and also I am, I was deep learning engineer before I joined, joined Intel. So I know what is the pain with with deployment of AI uh, solutions. It doesn't work fast or um, other problems. Today, of course, we will cover performance mostly. But what deploying challenges we have when we deploy our neural network? Well, we need to think about infrastructure, right? Where to de deploy our network? Should we deploy um, with cloud? Should we deploy with user uh, device? Um, how to scale, right? If we have more and more users, how to serve all of them? Uh, we need to think about performance. We would like to, to process as fast as possible, to, to serve as many people as possible using the same device. Also, we need to think about model versioning and updates because um, what, what's uh, up to date right now it's not it, it won't be in one year or so so we need to update the model uh, we also need to manage our data the data sent by user and of course pre-process it before feeding neural network right um, because uh, in most cases we need to do something with our images or we need to co tokenize text and so on and very important topic, we need to think about security and privacy, especially when we take into account uh, GDPR, right? We don't want to, to, to process uh, data because it's very, very risky. And um, monitoring and debugging, why the network doesn't work as, as expected, maybe it works. So we need to know that, right? We need to monitor our, our network. And how to integrate with existing systems, in most cases, um, the neural network is not the final product. We need to integrate it into some pipelines. For example, maybe we need to call some REST API or, or something. We need to integrate it somehow. And of course, we need to know if it works correctly and if our users like them. So these are deploying challenges we have. They, they are not all, right? But most uh, deploying challenges we have when we deploy our networks. and quantization could help with these. So um, if we think about quantization, in most cases, that's because we would like to deploy on the edge, closer to user. We would like to deploy on smartphone. We would like to deploy on laptop, for example. We don't want, in this case, send data to any cloud anywhere. In this case, infrastructure and scalability um, well, we don't need to think about scalability because new user comes with new machine, right? So we can use that machine for processing. We also don't think to, um, don't have to think about security and privacy because if we process on the edge, next to the user, right, on, on um, their device, we don't need to send data anywhere to any cloud. So everything is very private and secure. And of course, in, mo uh, in my case, for example, I think it's easier to integrate something what is running locally instead of creating uh, REST API, call the, you know, some specific endpoint and wait for the internet connection. But what I would like to talk today is performance optimization. <coughs> because uh, quantization will give you much better performance. And as I said, we need to sacrifice just a little of accuracy. So, if we look at these two videos, they present the same model, um, mo model based on open post for post estimation, and I cannot spot, spot any difference in accuracy of these models. The only difference I, I see here is the performance, right? This one on the left is running 40 frames per second, and this one on the right is running 83, 81, and 
84, 85 frames per second. And the difference between these models is that this one on the left is floating point 32, and this one on the right is int 8, so it was quantized. And the, the next difference we can see is that the floating point model takes 16 megabytes of our disk space and um, quantized model 4.7. Maybe it's not a big deal right here, but if we think about large language model, 16 gigabytes versus 4 gigabytes, it makes difference, right? I it's much faster to, to download from internet, for example. Uh, so let's talk about quantization. So quantization is, um, in mathematics and digital signal processing, is the process of mapping input values from a large set to output values in a smaller set, often with a finite number of elements. This is definition from Wikipedia, but it doesn't sound sounds easy to understand, right? Good, because I have some charts. So this is sine function. We can treat it as continuous, right? Because it can um, um, it can result in any value between minus one and one. Uh, depends, of course, on x. But if we quantize it to something like this, so we specify there are only 11 available values. And as you can see at this mm, orange line, does it look like sine? No, it, it's not the same, but it is very similar. So maybe you can understand the concept. And if you select more than 11 available values, it will be more and more closer to, to, to the real sine function. So this is the quantization in case of 1D signal. But if you still don't, mm, don't feel it, Let's look at this. This is um, the same, of course, image. On the left, you see men standing in the middle of forest. There is also sunset and so on. And it's, uh, the, the, the image on the left, um, mm, every pixel is 24 bits, right? So can can take any from 16 millions of colors. This one on the right was already quantized. So it means that we can select only one of 16 colors. So one million colors less. But if you look at this on the right, you still see men standing in the middle of forest, right? Maybe sunset is not so clear. Maybe there is a just a bright um, area or something. But still, the, 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 the context is visible. And this one on the left, we could treat it like, you know, floating point 32 model. And this one on the right is like int 8 model. Very, very similar but not the same and of course this quantization was very heavy right we we lost one um, many many colors we just converted 60 millions into 16 but let's look at the quantization definition so we have our mm, values in floating point 32 domain so it can take any value f between minimum and maximum and then we, of course, have a range for int 8, so it's just 8 bits, 1 byte. So uh, the, the, the range is from one, minus 127 to 128. So we do the conversion like this. We clip outliers because we don't want them to use, uh, we don't need them. Uh, because they will change uh, our precision too much, so we clip them and we round the other values to some integer, um, taking into account the formula below. So we divide real value by some scale, and the scale is between minimum and maximum value. And of course, we round it to the nearest point, and of course, we, we move it by zero point because it doesn't have to be zero here, right? It can be anything. It could be zero, it could be one, it could be 15, whatever, right? But this one, this point is converted to zero. This one um, is converted to minus uh, 127 and all of them here are rounded to some specific integer. So this is the quantization. We are changing the precision um, and we are changing the values. So maybe we will need also dequantization sometimes. So dequantization is um, formulated as, as this. We have now our range in an 8 format. Of course, we would like to convert them back to floating point 32. So what we do, we do the conversion back. Um, 
subtracting 0 point from end 8 value and multiplying by scale we used before for quantization. And of course, we are losing precision here, right? We, we cannot um, go back to all these points close to 0 before um, because now we don't know them. It was loosey compression, something like that, like in JPG format for images. And, but in most cases, this is absolutely enough to, to have a great performance with not much accuracy drop. Okay, let's look at quantization types. Um, so um, the first one is fake quantization. It's not real quantization because um, it means that we do the quantization and immediately we do the dequantization. So the we put the floating point 32 values to the fake quantization node and then at the out, um, um, as the output we have also floating point 32. But what we do here if we are losing precision and why we need this I will explain later. However, we need to think about it like we are generating here quantization error and it will be helpful um, in a few slides. So the real quantization, the, the first real quantization type is weight compression and it means like we have our model in floating point 32 format then we train it of course we still have floating point 32 in our trained model and then we do weight compression and it means we are changing all, all the weights from the model to end 8 format so we have our quantized model so this is very simple it's just changing all our weights to integer so we can um, save them to disk and have and use four times uh, less space. In case of um, inference, when we do the calculations, all of these weights must be dequantized to floating point 32 because all calculations will happen in floating point 32. The next type of quantization, if we just change one thing and we add representative data set, sometimes called calibration data set, we can do post-training quantization and it, mean, and it means that we will change not only weights but also we will change operations to end 8. So it doesn't mean that um, our weights will be dequantized to floating point to do calculations in floating point um, format. No, it means all calculations will be done in end 8. So like, you know, um, adding integers or multiplying integer by integer. So what we need to do is to provide this calibration representative data set to, s to capture all the values between layers. So because, you know, um, we need to know what is the input range to be able to quantize the, 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 the um, operation. So that's why we need to provide a data set to put uh, the data through the model to register all the m values in the middle to be able to, uh, to calculate scale and other quantization parameters. So this is the, the first post-training, um, this is the full uh, quantization type, post-training quantization. And there is there is a slight chance that our accuracy drop will be unacceptable. So for example, in most cases, really, I, I saw in my life it was like less than 1%, even less than 0.5%. But some models are very sensitive. So in this case, we can lose, for example, 10% of accuracy from 80 to 70, and it's not acceptable. So what to do? We can use another type of quantization called accuracy control. In this case, we just need to provide two more things. First is accuracy drop allowance. It means how much accuracy we can sacrifice. For example, not more than 0.1%. Uh, but to do it, we need to also provide validation data set. We need to measure accuracy before quantization and after quantization. And if it exceeds the, um, our threshold of one point uh, zero point one percent of accuracy drop then we measure which operations are the most sensitive for quantization and we don't quantize it so it means that most of the operations in the network are quantized but some of the nodes are not quantized at all they are still in floating point 32 so it means that in, in case of inference some operations will happen in floating point 32 so accuracy was preserved. However, 
we need to um, achieve less speed up than using post training quantization. But this is the solution if you cannot um, if you cannot sacrifice more more um, accuracy, right? And there is still one case that um, let's say um, now the now the accuracy is you know uh, fixed, so still is a good accuracy, but you couldn't quantize so many nodes that the performance gains is negligible, something like that. So what to do in that case? Well, now we can go to our model before, before training. And this is our model, right? We have inputs, we have weights, we have some operations like, let's say, convolution and ReLU. And if we add some nodes called fake quantization nodes during training, we will generate quantization error during training at and it will appear in our loss. So it will be fixed by, by SGD, by gradient descent. And so in this case, um, this is of course not recommended as the first choice. The first choice should be absolutely post-training quantization, then accuracy control quantization. And if it's still, it's not good, quantization and training because you need to retrain your model. Of course, fine tuning is also okay, but you need to have data, training data. You, ha you need to have uh, your model. You, have to, you need to have training pipeline. Sometimes I it's not possible to have them, right? Sometimes you just download the model from uh, internet, from GitHub, for example, and you just use it. So in this case, post-training quantization. But if you, if you really want to have great performance and no accuracy drop, quantization our training is the right choice good and um, before we I show you some code just a few words about OpenVINO and NNCF because I will use them to run the quantization and to run the inference so OpenVINO is a product from Intel it's open source toolkit for optimizing and deploying AI inference and OpenVINO means open visual inference and neural network optimization. However, it started as visual inference. Right now, it's absolutely for everything, NLP, audio, large language models, generative AI, and so on. So, if you have your, your model in one of these most popular frameworks, Keras, PyTorch, TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite, ONNX, and so on, and you use OpenVINO, you will get optimized performance, and you can run on Intel devices like CPUs, core from your laptop, Xeon from server. Also, we support ARM from Mac. Uh, GPUs, Intel integrated GPUs, Intel discrete GPU cards like Arc or Flex, and also NPUs available in our new processors will, will be launched in December, and also FPGA. And of course, it, it runs on any operating system, Windows, Linux, or Mac. So this was short introduction to OpenVINO. This is like, let's treat it for the purpose of this presentation, like inference engine for faster inference. Now, the, the, the part of OpenVINO is also neural network compression framework, NNCF in short. So you have your model, full, uh, your, your you know, trained model in TensorFlow, PyTorch, ten o, uh, ONNX or OpenVINO. Then you use one of the, these algorithms, post-training quantization, accuracy control quantization, quantization of our training, weights compression, but also filter pruning, binarization, sparsity, and many, many more. And you end up with some kind of compressed model. It may be quantized, it, can, it may be pruned or anything, right? But you, you just need to use NNCF for that. Uh, and how to use NNCF? Of course, first pip install NNCF, and then I will show you some cult. Let's start with weights compression. So, um, weights compression in NNCF, just two lines of code. The first is import. The second is compress weights. It's very simple, right? You are just changing, you are replacing floating point weights with end weights. So, that's why just one line of code. And in case of Llama, for example, Llama 7 billion chat, from 25 gigabytes to 6 gigabytes because of compression of weights. In case of downloading it from internet, it makes difference, right? In case of Dolly, from 44 to 11. In case of GPT, for example, 6 billions from 23 to 6. Four times less because we are changing four bytes from floating point 32 to one byte of end 8. Good. Post-training quantization then in 
um, LNCF. So first we need to prepare that, you, you remember, representative dataset, calibration dataset, and so on. So let's import LNCF, of course, let's create data loader fro from PyTorch. Then we need to define our pre-processing function, also called transformation function. In case of quantization, we don't use labels. We just use data. So in, ca in this case, you don't need to provide any labels, any, anything like that, any annotations, just, just data. And so we skip that label here in this transform function. Also, we can do pre-processing if we have some resizing, scaling or something here. We do in this function and we create the data set in NNCEF format. This is calibration data set. What we need to do next is to quantize our model. So first we load that model from one of these formats, TensorFlow, PyTorch, OpenVINO, on and X. And then we use function quantize when we provide our model and when we provide our calibration data set. And if we look at accuracy drop in this specific case, YOLO V5, maybe, maybe you, you know that model, uh, it's for object detection. The difference between floating point 32 and int 8 is from, uh, this is mm, of, course, of course mean average precision, 0 0.769 to 0 0.763. As I promised, it's, it's, it's very negligible accuracy drop. It's not true in all, in all cases. Uh, as I said, um, some models are very sensitive to quantization, but this one is not. It's, it's very easy to quantize it and it will run much, much faster. So uh, let's run the live code. Uh, I showed you, I showed you um, uh, YOLO v5. However, my code, which I have here, is for in, uh, YOLO v8. So I'm going to show it. Good, perfect. So I'm going to convert and optimize YOLO v8 model here. So first I, I load the, the, the data um, to for sanity testing. We are going to detect people here. So then I use uh, YOLO from Ultralytics package. I'm going to use YOLO v8 N nano model. So I load this model uh, and I show that it works here. I proved that it works before, um, of course, um, conversion and quantization. Then I'm going to convert that model to OpenVINO format first. So I use export function. Format OpenVINO, half true means that uh, I will use floating point 16 in this case, but it doesn't change um, anything because we are going to quantize it to end 8 anyway. And then we let's look at the quantization code. So, so first we need to get our data. Th this data, the, the YOLO V8 model was trained on um, a COCO data set. So we download this data set and we create a COCO data set uh, from, from Torch Vision, right? We, we import it from to Torch Vision. They, then we need data loader. And the next step is to uh, cre initialize OpenVINO by creating core object. We read the model we already exported to OpenVINO format. Then we define our transformation function. In this case, as I said, we don't care about labels, so we skip label. We just take the first element, which is data itself, in this case, image, of course. And we create our data set in NNCF format and it's time for quantization. So what we do here, we specify our uh, path to, the, to, to save our model to, and then we quantize, providing our already read OpenVINO model, quantization dataset, plus some additional parameters, configuration, like preset that we will uh, do the quantization, which is mixed. It means that um, some operations will be quantized, some not, and ignore scope, this is defined here, and it means that those operations won't be quantized. Because in this case, we know that multiplication, subtraction, sigmoid are very, very sensitive for quantization, so we don't want to quantize them. They will be still in floating point 32, but it will uh, give us great performance. And we will check this performance on CPU. So let me run the code um, here. I quantize that model before that speech because you know uh, it takes some time so in this case it will just skip the the cells of quantization and it should uh, just um, run the the benchmarking 
yeah oh no it's it's running quantization so you will see uh, how it how it works in this case we are using t 300 images um, yeah it's 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 enough in most cases for in the more um, images you give the better quantization result will be right because more data you have it's it's captured all the you know the, the differences between data and so on so the range is like uh, better 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 captured uh, and as you can see it's not very it's not very mm, slow it's it's quite fast right we have already 90 percent so as you can see 40 41 seconds to to quantize and bias corrections as well uh, just in one second and now we are running our benchmarking 30 seconds we need to wait 30 seconds to run on our uh, cpu yes and this one is floating point 32 model so yolo v8 model converted to open vino this is the first cell and the second cell the same model but uh, but plus quantization ah maybe you can hear that my fan is right now mm, working and my cpu also and let's see at the results so we know that we uh okay i think the most important here is throughput right 46 frames per second um in case of floating point 32 model and in 30 seconds should be the second result let's see how many frames per second we will have okay it's ready 116 so more than almost three times faster but absolutely more than two times faster this is nice right i would say this is almost a free lunch just a few lines of code negligible accuracy drop and two and point two point five two point seven times faster uh, really really nice i would say okay let's switch back to our and uh, to the deck Ah, why from the beginning? So, if you would like to learn more about any of these algorithms, post-training quantization, accuracy control quantization, quantization aware training, you can take photo of this, scan QR code, and uh, open Vino and NCF are open source projects. These are notebooks with the code which are also open source so you can clone the repository run yourself on your computer locally or using collab for example and you will learn how to do the quantization okay i see that still some people taking photos uh good this this person if you you know reach out to me i can send you that uh, that deck no problem as well and also if you scan this QR code you can learn more about OpenVINO which, is, which was uh, inference engine here in our case and of course the easiest way to install OpenVINO is pip install OpenVINO and you can run using um, OpenVINO but quantization it's not only for OpenVINO right you can, you can use it with PyTorch you can use it with TensorFlow with any other in most frameworks good but I have some extra for you if you feel after this speech this survey for me is, is very important for us right because we would like to know what you think about our you know ai products and so on i will draw two lucky people who will win active noise cancellation uh, earbuds so after this speech please come to me i have uh, pens here i have uh, surveys and let's say at at three so in 20 minutes i will wait for you here for field surveys and I will draw two lucky people at three to, to, to win this. This is anonymous survey. You just need, to, you don't have to put your email here. Just please put your name. Otherwise I cannot identify you when I draw you, right? So, and all of these are for free. Please feel free to take them. Um, I'm not going to take them back to Poland. No way. <laughs> and this is all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Any questions? I'll give you the mic. Yes, I have a question about uh, NNCF and OpenVINO. So, for example, uh, MIT has this tiny engine 
which does also optimization for inference, where you generate code, for example, on an ARM core. So you only take the functions that you need. Let's say a convolutional kernel 3 times 3, uh, signed bit, signed 8 bits, and so on. Uh, when you use NNCF, do you also generate only the code you need to run inference? Um, yes, we also do some kind of fusion, for example, because some operations in CPUs uh, could be run in one um, one cycle of the, the CPU, something like that, right? So, for example, multiplication plus addition is just one operation. So we do something like that, mostly fusion, and of course we skip operations which are not needed. So, for example, if you have in your tra training pipeline, in your training model, you have identity operations, we just remove it, right? It's not needed for inference. When you build an inference library, do you still uh, do you bring all of the code in, or do you only select the functions? Aha, okay, I, I know what you mean. You mean the, the library itself, the engine, right? Yeah, we have all the code. It's not, um, I wouldn't say this is for like the smallest devices. No, 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 it's like for, for uh, laptops, for Edge AI, but not as Edge, <laughs> something like that. So in the examples, you've uh, shown uh, to do quantisa quantization after training, but couldn't you do it also during training to speed up the training of the model? Yes, it, it was quantization aware training, which I presented here. Uh, this is quantization aware training. So you add those fake quantization nodes to generate quantization error and to appear it in loss at the end. So then you do the quantization, it's fake quantization here. So after that... Y no, I, did, uh, I haven't heard about that approach. I think floating point is still um, a good format for training because you need to capture all the differences like you know which sometimes are very s uh, small and something like that. So that's why we still use floating point during training. But adding this fake quantization allow you to uh, quantize it after the training without any problem, without any accuracy drop. So yeah, I, we don't use quantization during training. We used fake quantization during training and do the post-training quantization after that training. For, for one more question. Yeah, thanks for the cool talk. Um, so maybe I'm asking the wrong guy, but. So in your opinion, uh, is it something that you that you say, hey, anyone that trains a deep learning network should always do this, and you can always afterwards check if it impacts the accuracy, yes, no, in your case, or are there uh, uh, a priori specific cases where you say, hey, this is, might be dangerous to do, or don't do it? Okay, uh, I don't know any specific cases that this is dangerous, right? I would say try it. Um, it shouldn't take much time, right? And you will and uh, know if it's for you, if it solves your problem of performance and if the accuracy drop is mm, negligible or something. So I would say try it in any case, something like that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, if you're still interested in the merchandise, feel free. But if you're interested in coffee also, uh, feel free. <laughs> Absolutely. So please come here for survey. and for all this men merchandise.